And if you don't like a, a take or whatever, we can we can turn it off. Okay. So, hey, what's up, people? This is Joe, Joel. Let's go. What, what was the other? Uh... Giuseppe. Giuseppe, yeah. <laughs> so he found me. He found my YouTube channel and reached out and basically is traveling through California on the way to Arizona. Yeah. And he just decided to stop by, and I was willing to have him. Yeah. So we're having we're having cool conversations on basically everything. Exactly. Oh, so you're going you're going to a, a shamanic event, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like um, in in Arizona. Yeah, it's gonna be um, getting of a four year um, kind of training. Which, um, yeah, I'm excited about. It's how long? It's gonna be intense. How long did, did you say uh, the actual session was for this? That you're going to tomorrow, basically. Yeah, um, it's, it's for a week. For a week, but um, yeah, it's gonna be. It's um, and it's at like a um, an actual like resort or it's like a retreat retreat center, center I guess. For, okay. It's considered that. Um, but yeah, we have. Uh, um, it's pretty close to Mexico, so I'm a little scared of how toasty it's gonna be. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's gonna be. Um, the, the first year is um, uh, uh, masks of illusion. So it's essentially like shedding our masks of illusion that we've built up or accumulated. Yeah. So. Um, Which um, is a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's the the le the level of masking is. It's like uh, you've heard of people comparing it to onions peeling back the layers when you're actually yeah. trying to look into your actual like self or whatever that is. It's true. Endless layers of <laughs> of unmasking. Yeah. And they, they just build on each other as far as yeah. the uh, um, the misconceptions, I guess. That um, uh, is, uh, it just may have like a, I don't know, like a, a sliver of truth, but um, that is, you know, is is predicated upon uh, another sliver of truth from before. Um, I don't know. And after a while, you're not believing. Uh, you're believing more. Uh, I guess miss more mask stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> False illusions. Yeah. You have a child? Yes, oh. just one. Boy, girl? A girl. Yeah, she's almost five. Wow. She's getting big. It's crazy. I have I have a two year old. Two, nice. Yeah. <coughs> Jackson. Jackson. Yep. Nice. So, um, is what have we been, what have we been talking about today? We've been talking about all kinds of bullshit. Yeah, just the uh, yeah, just the levels of um, levels of awareness. Yeah. What have you experienced? Have you experienced anything personally, like? Uh, you know, people have people say they have uh, like revelations, basically, or they have spiritual experiences. Have you had anything like profound happen to you? Yeah. 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 Um, and are these like specific uh, examples? Like, and do, can you relate them to something that like uh, triggered them or instigated them? Um, yeah. Um, that's been this kind of whole path that's uh, taken me down this direction of, of, of looking into shamanism mm -hmm. um, it's really um, interesting because our uh, soul's essence or our consciousness can essentially um, go and reach out to any other consciousness or soul's essence that's ever existed mm -hmm. on this planet uh, in the past or future and um, uh, have a conversation with it as a current living entity or are you just accessing records that look like they're talking to you um it's not in um well in in real time yeah um, you're doing it in like a um it's it's considered a, a journey state so it's um you're using your uh theta brain waves okay at those points um which is um induced by um drumming okay so the it's what the Native Americans would do with drumming or rattling. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a fast-paced um, theta 
brainwave state that your mind gets in um, that we do when we sleep. And um, it is the time that um, it's what we tap into our, our inner knowing and um, we can't lie to ourselves when we're in our theta brainwaves, which is pretty mm. interesting. So let's go ahead and pass. So what he was saying earlier today was the idea of the, the Tower of Babel idea in the Bible about how whoever, whatever, introduces... Well, first, the Tower of Babel is about uh, splitting the languages up so that people can't communicate. But what he's saying is the language itself, the introduction of, uh, the introduction of spoken uh, language itself is in itself... Uh, uh, creates the ability to lie, basically, where exactly. what you're saying in theta state or in the basically the what we had telepathic communication, you're not able to lie in that state because it's not our words are all subjective and subject to interpretation, and that's where lying comes from. Exactly, because we can mis we can misrepresent whether intentionally or accidentally. Yeah, but when we're uh, talking with each other, like. Um I can feel your your heart if it if it's if it's sad or if it's joyous, you know. Mm -hmm. Like um, by tapping into that, by tapping into our own, you know, um, you can see like the reflection of that with, it, with someone else. So although it's not like a um, overt knowing, like um, as like tangible as words, you mm -hmm. know, um, or. Uh, it's um, it, it's a bit more subtle that we need to, I guess, condition ourselves to tap into or become comfortable with um, being sensitive to that um, realm of understanding. Okay. And that and that part that part also that sensing that doesn't lie to you either, as far as I can tell. Like exactly, if if I'm you know listening to say a, new, a fake newscaster talking head, you know, like you feel. Yeah. Not necessarily that they're doing something malicious, but you feel the lack of that exactly. uh, heart or true intent. You feel like they're just literally reading a script, and it's absolutely meaningless. And right. exactly, and and as well as you can tell when someone believes this uh, a truth, and it could be that that that's where things get a little muddied, um, where like a truth and someone's personal truth. Um, may be um, like the the objective truth may be one thing and someone's interpretation and subjective truth may be something completely different um, and yeah just how that um, how that overlays and, and how, how the how they work together I guess um, it, it's ways for things to get um, misinterpreted um, and um, yeah because because language is so clumsy and um, there's not words for for things right but, um, we've come to think that there is and it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it seems limited in, in, in many ways I think um, yeah it's it, it's shutting off um, those intelligences of our of our of our gut and our heart, and um, just working within the intelligence of our mind, I guess. And and that's that's just like you have muscle memory, right? Exactly. Our habitual use of the spoken language, uh, it's like we we have a certain amount of attention, right, that we can give to wherever we want, and. If we've our whole lives been giving 100% of our attention to the, the thought activity in the mind and the spoken language, and exactly. how we apply that to this world, the realm, then that would uh, seemingly naturally block the other aspects of yourself that are as important, mm -hmm. not necessarily more important, but as important as the mind. Exactly. So yeah, and, and just like when you, um, like with muscles atrophy, and you, you're not using them, uh, like our um, pineal gland or um, anything, it may, if you're not using it, it, um, it stops working. So if we're, we're just working on our biceps the whole time, mm -hmm. um, yeah, figuratively with our, working on our minds, then yeah. our legs get pretty weenie. Yeah, yeah, you don't want that either if you're a weightlifter. <laughs> exactly. That's the worst thing. Chicken legs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
Yeah, so... Uh, like I was telling uh, Joe earlier, I, I don't... I don't uh, put any huge emphasis on any one area of what we're dealing with as a species, but we have to look at all the areas. Exactly. We can't, anything that we ignore goes directly to the subconscious and gets buried and then it comes out and it manifests in some other way. Exactly. That's what, uh, have you heard of Tobias Lars? Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He, one of the things he's saying, talking about that makes complete sense is that the wars that happen are literally our subconscious stuff that we're burying coming out yeah. like it's manifesting because it's being buried so if if we don't have like if, if we have a clean mirror as a subconscious and there's nothing in there basically there's not going to be any war because it's it's not fueled by anything exactly. so if we can clean our internal shit then the external will accordingly change which I think is some of the reasons that we um, have negated like the expression of feelings and uh, resolving feelings and um, and and listening to others like um, yeah just if, if, if you feel mad oh, why do we have to stuff it all the time especially right. As, right. as men like why is it not okay for a man to cry like it's not that big of a deal like it's not um, only not that big of a deal, it's also healthy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a processing of emotions. It's a cleansing. Yeah. You know, you, you, you remember, I'm sure, you know, you have some aspect of that guilt that comes along with crying just because we were brought up with and conditioned against it. But I know whenever I cry, uh, it's, 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 like, it's literally like rain, you know, like yeah. it's clearing the atmosphere of your internal state. And you feel completely different after. You feel invigorated once it's done with. Exactly. And, uh, you know, stopping that process is just another uh, way that we stuff our shit, basically. Yeah. It's just not, it's not healthy. <laughs> yeah, as humans, we have different ways to discharge. Um, it's interesting how um, we are, we relate to uh, batteries in so many aspects. And in, uh, we relate to um, uh, a whole energy um What's it called? Uh, the whole idea of energy, um, you know, with the positive and negatives um, and, and polarity, um, how all these things kind of uh, work together. And um, sorry, I'm just looking at that guy that's over there. Sorry. Which one? Is, Is he messing with your car? That's what, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> um, Send to this chest. So yeah, like each so of each, them up. each part of our body, like um, that's why everything um, is in pairs. Like two nostrils, two eyes, two ears. One has a negative um, charge, and the other one has a positive charge. Um, in like Eastern understanding, mm -hmm. um, and it's I, again, I I don't I know nothing. I'm just what I've heard and read and learned. Um, but I, I don't know any of the, I mean, these are not, none of, none of my own concepts. They're just uh, collections of other, other things I've put together. But um, yeah, like we, every night when we go to bed, um, we're recharging our battery. So we can, you know, use our energy during the day so we can um, go to sleep and, you know, recharge. So when we, um, we have to discharge, discharging our, our stress or our, or our uh, hard emotions um, by, you know, crying or shaking or um, there's, a, there's, there's, there's like five different ways humans discharge. Um, and how, yeah. Fighting, how, like arguing with each other. Exactly. Yeah, the, um, the whole a energetic a expression. So if we don't, if we don't let ourselves um, express what we feel and um, are going through, then they work themselves out in our dream time, and then um, in our subconscious, and also in our relationships um, with the ones that we care about. Uh, the uh, they get the, the, the brunt or the... Um, well, 
it's what also we can do in some ways. also it creates a chain reaction from what I see if you're in a relationship with whoever your family or wife girlfriend anything brother sister and if if you're repressing suppressing with regards to them then they feel it that and and they are apt to basically catch it like a virus and reciprocate exactly so and that can spread to the whole family to where every single person is basically being the mask to one another and all the shit's being put under the rug and it manifests in unhealthy ways in the family and you know there are outbursts and there are really mean things are said and just the relationships are bad even though they're pretending that stuff is going if you're not actually having a genuine conversation if you're not actually genuinely saying what you feel you know it's you're you're stuffing it yeah. and it, and, it, and it's just you know it's, it's unhealthy that's why like getting getting it all out there um like if you if your boss says something to you, you probably don't want to, uh, you know, get it all out with your boss. But like with your <laughs> with your friends and you know coworkers, uh, don't hold back the things that upset you. Let it be known um, because it's you end up carrying that burden um, into other aspects of uh, your existence, one way or another. Um, it's just not worth it eventually because you're it, it builds up fast. And it doesn't have to be. Uh... I was having this conversation with my sister earlier today about arguing with people. And it doesn't have to be this, like, screaming match where, like, I'm asserting my ego and I'm right and you're wrong. Like, that that's, that's also not accomplishing much. But what we were saying is it's an aspect of challenging one, one another. Exactly. So if, if there's something in the other person that you disagree with, that ability to challenge their perceptions without it turning into a fist fight without it turning into an ego match yes. then that's healthy it's constructive it keeps your it keeps you know things interesting and invigorating and you're not having to hide so much of this stuff and also it creates that level of trust because they're feeling your true intent they're feeling you know when you're actually passionate about something and you're having a conversation with somebody they feel that and that will uh, give them basically the the pass to do the same thing because we're so we're so uh, guarded that in order to basically get the other person to open up and say how they really feel, you gotta say first how you really feel. It's like somebody's gotta start. Exactly. If everyone's you know you know doing this, you know if somebody doesn't like break the ice, that's where that term came from. If somebody doesn't break the ice, then everyone will stay doing the same thing forever. Yeah, it's 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 um, showing each other uh, a level of vulnerability and mm -hmm. um, rawness and um, not being afraid of that, but like um, embracing it. Um, you know, it's uh, embracing both the the male aspect of ourselves and the feminine aspect of ourselves. Um, not one over the other, but um, you know, it's the it, it's understanding both and not suppressing either, mm -hmm. ideally. Yeah, we, we have a we have a lot of work. We've got ourselves into a really big pickle. Well, there's some pickles, all right. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, the the best thing we can do is you know um, live fully um, and live the life that we um, are brought here to live. Um, um, so uh, live fearlessly in, 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 in everything we do. Um, you know, if you know, if if you love, love with everything you have. You know, like um, if you uh, if you if you have to fight, then fight with everything you have. Um, give it your. I mean, everything. Um, that's why we have so many uh, emotions and um, can tap into these things. There's uh, there are places of power that we can uh, learn from. I think we just have to trust it. Yep. It's, it's a trust and it's a patience process. It's not easy. This this uh, inner trusting in something that you can't like observe or tangibly like hold, but. Um, 
once you can tap into it, the uh, the feeling is real. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's that gut. It's the gut feeling. It's, it's exactly. And you know, we're we're living in instant gratification society, and we we need you know fulfillment all the time. Not just for not actual fulfillment. We need like signs. We need you know. <laughs> We have, that's why we have all the titles and the diplomas and the celebrations and this and that. That's why it's all become so fake. Exactly. We all we need like these like overt signs that we're doing something right, but we've let we've let it become like a comical level, uh, the inversion thing we're talking about. Whereas, the actual, you know, thing that really just gets you that makes you feel with your whole being. It's it's simpler. It's more subtle. It's present always you know if you if you're willing to like dig deep inside and find out what where it is how it is and that that's that inner you know in in holotropic breath we call it the inner healer mm. and uh it's it's the trust really yeah it's the trust it's, it's like trusting your body to heal itself if you cut your finger mm. and and not or trusting your headache to resolve itself without popping aspirin yeah you know, like you're We've we've given ourselves the notion that the human being is something that just gets sick all the time automatically and it needs to be medicated, and we've taken that to you know the, the furthest possible Extreme. level, yeah. and it's gone to the exact opposite of trusting your system and your body and your spiritual internal system basically to know how to heal itself. This is giving you, yeah, giving your uh, inner sovereignty and the things that we need to know um, of ourselves and that give us strength. We're giving them away to these uh, systems of like artificial control that we give authority to, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, education, medicine, um, money, uh, religion, um, where they're things that we should um, we we should know how to take care of ourselves um with whatever whether it's homeopathic herbs or uh plants or uh plant medicine or i mean there's there's endless alternatives to the western model in every aspect oh, yeah. yet we've always uh, recreated this western model of uh, that perpetuates itself um even even the the, the placebo effect thing like yeah, we exactly. don't give that as much credit as it needs to have you it's know true. like that's the whole idea of um, <laughs> the the uh, what's that law of attraction? That's yeah. it's exact. There's proof about it. Like pe people, you know, what's his name? Uh, uh, the Anthony Robbins. You know, yeah, that's when right. he started off, all he did was affirmations. That's it. You know, he, <laughs> that's true. He just said, you know, I I am great. I am great. I am great. You know, this is whatever he wanted to manifest in his life. He just repeated it over and over. There wasn't anything like intelligent about it. It was just a simple fact. It was like building a muscle, and then his subconscious started believing it because it was repeated so much. And then he started exuding that energy, and then everybody else believed it. And it's as simple as that. And you know, the placebo effect has been proven billions, of, not billions, but countless times. Yeah. And you know, people. Not only that, but it's been <laughs> it has been proven in the level of uh, like surgical level like they, they've done a, a test group where they had like 20 people performed surgery on and they the guy performed actual surgery in like half of them and then he he just like made an yeah, incision on half of on them on the knees of yeah on the knees yeah that's great you've heard of that one yeah, yeah that's good and like they had the same like nearly same success rate on the ones that he didn't actually perform surgery on yeah. just because they believed they were getting help yeah, because they saw the the stitch. Yeah. The they, they you know, that. like how how does that how does that not knock the Western model like just out of like just like that's okay that's stupid let's not do that anymore. You invalidates know? it completely. And invalidates exactly. it exactly. I think um, yeah, going back to what you were saying as far as the Anthony Robbins and repeating himself often um, that coincides and um, aligns with um, like a mantra. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like when Buddhist um, or Tibetan, like they they're essentially um, they have the, the the bead and they're you know they're saying it 108 times. Um, uh, it, it's it's putting that intention and that that thought or um, the the appreciation of that deity or a, whatever you're you're putting it out there with um, your life energy. 
So whether you're you're doing it for personal gain or to uh, uh, strengthen another dimensional entity, or uh, uh, and or using it for magic. I mean, it's the same thing as as magical ceremony is as well, um, or r ritual magic is, mm -hmm. is is used the exact same way. Um, the repetition of it is uh, is where that um, strength um, is drawn from. I think. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I've to, I've never. It's also the the koan. Have you heard of koan? Yeah. Same same exact thing. You know, you're focused on one object for a set period of time, and it doesn't matter what that object is. But what it matters is that it's holding your focus. Mm. So, as as a, a tool of meditation, it's holding your focus on this thing, so I can be aware of everything that's not that thing. Exactly. And you know, it's just there's just tips. There's there's we have tools to do what not only what we want to do, but also to do what we need to do and to determine whether we should be doing what we want to do yeah. or what we need to do. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of the, the self, there's so much self-help stuff out there and in the Western mind, you know, you want to achieve for self. You want to success for self and, and that's, you know, that's uh, incorrect. Yeah. It's, it's just... As long it, it, that determine that is determined by your conception of self, and if it's the constricted, you know, little um, little guy housed in you know a sack of skin, then yeah, it's going to be painful for you because that's not what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah, it's the same thing of closing off uh, your your spirit and just uh, saying you're only existing in your meat suit, uh. like that's your only method of being. People say they're. Uh, uh, five, uh, we are, as humans, we occupy five different dimensions at, simultaneously, uh, which is kind of crazy. But uh, so that's, the, that's all Ox talking about is yeah. multi-dimensionality, and he's of course, exactly. you know, talking about building other crazy things and <laughs> simultaneous realms and you know tr time travel and all this stuff. Uh, I think he's spot on on almost everything if not everything you said by far um, it seems weird and we may not want to put on our big kid pants to believe it <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, he resonates with truth and uh, you can tell that you can tell that he's not uh, um, co-opted yeah. I can tell it yeah. and, and you know he's 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 not trying to serve an agenda other than uh, helping helping people, basically. Mm. Because you can tell really easily if somebody is, is serving an agenda, even if the agenda is just a thought form that you're trying to propagate, you're trying to uh, increase. You know, you can tell if somebody's like wedded to their thought form, or if they're if they're actually uh, investing their their energy in the community and the people around them and Sorry. you know problems they see it's just ob and he's like pure you know that's, I think I said that to you before he's, yeah. he's pure and and he attracts you know yeah. and he's also like compassionate about even his delivery of the message that he's trying to deliver because he knows people get overwhelmed easily and the stuff he's talking about is far beyond overwhelming for the vast majority of the population that's why most people don't even see what he's saying and exactly. then you know the people, the the people that have some capacity to receive. E even most of the people leaving comments are like, "What? Like I don't, I barely understand a hundredth of what you're trying to say over here." <laughs> yeah, he's uh, um, his vocabulary as far as and uh, describing things is really uh, spot on. Um, but he makes as accessible as it can be. Yeah. Um, he, he he does good work, I think. Um, and his really. story is like crazy, you know, like you, you, the stuff he's saying, the Montauk chair, like you know, crazy. The, just the story of them sending him out and then him dying, and then these, you, you saw that one, yeah, and he, two more years and he got ran over, and then three more years and someone shot him as he came, like and then he he said he went to like eighty, like a whole lifetime, and then he died at the end of that, and now he's here, you know, like he, but he remembers all these things. Yeah. And this is all not even real reality. This is the Montauk chair reality that was su supposedly accessing, you know, different timelines of his own Ogtella's personal thing. But it's like 
the idea that, that somehow he would be making that up or whatever, like that doesn't even cross my mind. It's like, exactly. okay, if that guy is telling lies, then the people that feel bullshit, like what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. You know, like they're That's they're true. talking about normal, ordinary, stupid stuff, and I I know they're not being real. You know, like yeah. I'll take his. You know, if, if he's making that shit up, I'll take his made up shit over there, made up shit any day of the yeah. week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The um, like like, like you're saying the um, I think that the, the area that he accesses that memory um is either like a soul contract aspect where he determined or um, negotiated to keep that um, aspect of himself like accessible yeah um, like uh, like like we may have negotiated strongly to remember our knowing of our soul's essence um, re to retain some of that information or access it easily uh, in this life you know it just depends how much we uh, negotiated or um, if, 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 if we did in that regard. Um. Yeah, that's that's an interesting topic also. Yeah, sorry, yeah. The, the, soul, the soul contract thing. Uh, yeah, whatever. If I have contracts myself, uh, they're hidden completely. <laughs> like, not... I have hints of this and that and the other thing, and I have, like, basically uh, ideas about what, what is and isn't going on, but... It's 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 masked for the most part, for me. So I think yeah that um, that area um, where I guess um, where we were talking about earlier about like our soul's essence can communicate with another soul's essence. Like this is all through um, journeying, but I also think like it's the same realm of information that people get to when they're sometimes doing ayahuasca mm. or. Um, also, um, past life regressions, or automatic writing, or um, you know, one of these one of these ways to to, to access our um, our our spirit and our souls knowing, because there's more um, encased um, in our cells and our being than um, our experience and our hard drive um, recalls. I think. In this, uh, the conscious mind. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, not very much. <laughs> it's not very much. That's that's why I think using uh, tr trusting the feeling, I think, is very important because it it it's almost like a spotlight for your conscious mind. So, like, if your feeling is saying do this, then then you can use the mind as a tool that is as it, as it is and research or talk to somebody who knows about that particular subject or whatever but mm. that gives you sort of a guide as to where to look yeah. and, then, and then you can utilize the mind in actual searching you know that topic out mm. but Absolutely. you don't need to use the mind to find the topic yeah that's that's where that's where you don't want to do it yeah using it to um categorize um without judgment so like review everything take in like things you agree uh, points you agree on and take in the the counter argument of it and um, uh, Try to address it without like judging it um, You may not agree with it and you may be furious the entire time, but hearing it out um, is uh, It's it's good for your Complete understanding because if we were only getting everything from one source we're getting everything from Fox News or CNN um, it's 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 only like it's it's like thinking that we have all of human humans history uh, because we have the Bible, but there's an entire library of books. Um, I mean uh, that yeah, didn't make it the final cut, right? Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it, it, or I mean, even even you know, uh, Gospel of Thomas, or like yeah. you said, the Gnostic texts. Exactly. Didn't make it and traditional Christians don't want to talk about it because you know it changes their entire message you know it changes the but I feel like I feel like even as far as religion is concerned there I feel like people are a little different now well 
it, I'm, I'm speaking mainly from my dad uh, in how he views like the idea of Christianity and God and all that he, he views it from his personal truth perspective as much as he can like he's not he's different of course from me but he's even changed in how he talks about the stuff he believes in and and to me even if you're taking a religion and you're believing it you're still taking you're still making it your own you're you're not ever just because there's not even one version out there to take yeah you know like exactly there's there's so many different versions of the bible and then you have different interpretations and you have different uh then you have the mandela effect supposedly coming in changing verses and all this and it's like it's pretty <laughs> funny dude yeah lion we, in the lamb versus you know wolf in the in the lamb it's like yeah it's hard to it, believe it's kind of hilarious it's, actually <laughs> yeah that, that's what's it's um where you can tell that it's uh it's it's half truths because there's versions yeah right um if it was the absolute truth, that it, it, it would, um, how can we know something that happened 2,000 years ago when most people can't tell me what they had yesterday for breakfast? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, and, and, and then trusting other people, like... And, and nobody like, can agree on it. Like, exactly. That, that's a, it, it creates division in and of itself. I think, yeah, they're, they're just, they're watered down versions of the uh, Babylonian, Sumerian, uh, tablets and content I think but um, yeah, just because they, they all show um, different um, polarized aspects of it I guess yeah. um, I don't know. even even the it, you know God is supposed to be somebody who is not named that's that's as far as I understand that's the one that makes sense because since the naming itself is divisive and subject to interpretation, Silence itself is the closest thing you're going to find to God or the present moment. You know, like once you start naming and defining and sticking it in a box, then yeah. of course it has become anthropomorphized and it's your version of what you think is coming from what someone else thought of, what was coming from, you know, exactly. like it, the telephone effect and you have some, you have something different every single time and nobody can agree on it. And you, you know, you have to, you have to get your stuff from something that has some level of, of solidity. It doesn't have to be perfectly solid, but you got it. That's where the feelings are such such good tools in determining if, if you should spend your effort and time and attention on something or not because it doesn't require this mind breakdown, mm -hmm. which is always going to be faulty and it's always going to be different depending on somebody else. The feeling is not subject to interpretation. Yeah. You can't say if you're feeling mad like, hmm, Am I feeling mad or no? That doesn't even. You're feeling <laughs> fucking mad. You want to like punch somebody in the face, and you got to release it somehow. Exactly. You know. So the feelings are true, truer than the mind stuff because they're not subject to interpretation. Mm. You're feeling sad, you're feeling sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just simple. We we've convoluted everything. Yeah, we need to. Uh, um, yeah, just demand uh, our own our own integrity. We have to find our own strength and inner integrity with ourselves and each other, and trust each other. Uh, the more we stay divided and uh, attached to whatever, uh, yeah, whatever alignment we think that we're uh, so confident in. Um, all you're doing is creating more division between us coming together and like um, making actual things changing for because uh, it's both the two sides of the same coin essentially um, it's all being used by the same entity so if we're using a name and if it's not the true God what is that entity now after 2,000 years of us funneling our <laughs> louche yeah. and our, right. our our power to it? Like That's the idea, right? If it was a trickster then and has for 2,000 years gotten power by the Spanish Inquisitions through torturing people, like boiling people um, for not, uh, you know, not believing, um, what type of um, what type of energy? What does uh, it look like now, right? Yeah. <laughs> after all, after all this, yeah. It, 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 
who can believe that uh, the creator of all things uh, enjoyed the smell of burnt flesh and uh, you know say the things that are said and uh, that are attributed to uh, a divine being um, it's 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 all uh, it's all half truths. Yeah. Don't buy any things. Just stay um, stay neutral and uh, question and trust trust your feelings. Yeah. Go with your feelings. Go with your heart. Go with your gut. Go with your intuition. And uh, you know you can't go wrong with that. It's literally impossible. It's true. It's only possible to go wrong if you're going down rabbit holes of the mind that's where it's possible to go wrong and you're not actually getting rid of your true emotions they're just being masked they're being buried and you're not basically paying attention to them they're still there mm -hmm. it's like you know the silent voice of god you know the quiet voice that you have to basically stop your yakking to, to yeah. <laughs> feel and understand it's like it's always there it's just you can cover it up mm. so you just have to you have to learn to give your attention to that which is not deceiving it's true and so the the oh, everything um, that we can trust um, is from within so um, it's uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Daniele Bellelli he has this uh, theory of uh, uh, create your own religion <laughs> every single person should have their own religion um, of what you believe and no one can disprove each other's religion because it's yours mm -hmm. like you have created every construct that you buy into um, and there's nothing to argue about yeah. like it's over um, it's like the flying spaghetti monster exactly uh, <laughs> that's the, that, that's the, 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 the ironic part about the organized religion is because that's what everyone's actually doing Okay, they're they are creating their own religion. Yeah. You know, they're they're taking pieces of that they like and they're holding onto those, and it's a construct, and and it's not what everybody else has. The only thing they're fighting about is what they think the whole of you know the name that they attribute their religion. That's all they're fighting about is what they think that whole thing looks like and pieces of it, and you know, yeah. they're not even arguing about anything really. Yeah, it's just rehashing the same points over yeah. and in and different uh, cultural interpretations of the same points um, you're, you're arguing about this is blue to me no no it's green to me it's like I said it's the same thing as you're accomplishing nothing lights just <laughs> reflecting off it that's the only thing it's <laughs> okay so you see green like all right it's okay I'm not gonna kill you for it <laughs> yeah the, just accepting um, just because someone um, isn't you, there's no reason to demonize or uh, ostracize or focus on any aspect of scrutinizing them. Just allow them to be and appreciate them as that. Yep. Insecurities come in and they... If, if you're feeling deficient, we were having this conversation also, if you're feeling deficient in yourself in some aspect, then that sort of makes you uh, untrusting of yourself because you know you can't really trust yourself if you feel like you're missing something mm -hmm. and then also you know you carry that and you project that onto other people and then you, well if I can't trust myself then how can I trust you you know I'm yeah. the closest thing I know so you know if you're there then you're further away so I can probably trust you even less so that also has a cascading you know viral effect on people if every, then everyone starts distrusting each other they both have that same effect if, if, you know, you get people that don't feel they're deficient and they talk to other people, that spreads as well. It's just that that has been not spreading as much as the other thing. So our job or role here as people who are not feeling deficient, I mean, I don't. I'm not sure what, what exactly your thing is. We're all on some whatever journey, but the goal is to spread the idea that it's to fight that idea of original sin, really. Like, that whole concept that everyone's born flawed is the fucking, like, most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. You know? And and if that's buried deep in your in your subconscious, then, then you're walking around feeling like, you know, you're missing a limb or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you're distrusting everything because, like, you think you're broken when you're not. You're just, you know, you, 
you've been telling yourself that the whole time. Yeah, so yeah, when we accept what, um, yeah, whether it's our society or whatever religion, um, our, it's all regional. Um, like, uh, Christians are, uh, think that theirs is true, but so do Buddhists um, think that their religion is as well. Um, but they're not taking each other's into consideration of the truth that they both are uh, sharing and understanding uh, at the same time. Yeah, it's 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 silly, really. I mean, uh, it's really all subjective at some point, and and if you're fighting about it, and also if you consider you know, self is everything, God is everything, whatever, it's it's really a snake chasing its own tail, and it's got to get tired of that at some point and be like, all right, guys, let's uh, let's stop like eating our fingers off, you know? Like, exactly. <laughs> it's cyclical, also, you know. I mean. It goes, you know, comes and goes. If you do consider uh, the existence to be eternal, then that's what it is. It's Maya, you know, it's a play, and it's got to be interesting. Otherwise, you're basically, you know, uh, sitting around being bored, like playing harps on some clouds or something. And it's like, <laughs> man, like, uh, I'm tired of this. Let's, let's get something else going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trip, though, like, and just the fact that we can n not remember things, like, we can be at a level where, you know, I, I, I don't remember anything, basically, you know, I'm, I'm a human, and my brain is, like, kind of fucked up, and <laughs> I only, I only know a certain amount of things, but it's still, like, the whole thing is miraculous, like, existence in itself is just, like, it's yeah. crazy. I think the, the whole, the only reason it works is because of the mind wipe, and that, when we change from this realm to the next realm, like when we make transition to the astral, like full time, then we get to keep our memories, but it's reunited with all of our soul's memory that it's ever had, mm -hmm. essentially, um, because we still encompass that with, with, with on us at the, at the time. It's like the um, Akashic records that yeah. you can access from this level. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just trust, really. I mean, it, that's that's if you can have trust and you can trust that things work out as they ought to, then you you lose a, a bulk of that anxiety like immediately. Yeah. Because and and to to trust, you know, just look at your look at your lungs or something. You know, like look at the blood. Like how much of that are you uh, responsible for? Like yeah, it you know, still does the trust way. is already there. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you know it or not, you are trusting. You're trusting your body to function properly. You're trusting your spirit to fit in there somehow properly. Yeah. You know, like, where where did the mistrust come in? Like, how is it even possible? <laughs> it's amazing that all this stuff holds together in the first place. Exactly. You know? It's all woven together so... It's seamless. So per, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it, li it literally is perfect at, at that level. It's probably perfect at all levels, but also... That's where the paradox of, you know, in, infinity comes in because, you know, if there are infinite possibilities and there's possibility for, you know, things being broken within a perfect exactly. creation. Like so the, the rock that God can't move, you know, God created the rock he can't move, like that whole, you know, yeah. it's a, the paradox is real. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I think the, uh, what these creator beings are, the, uh, the planetary beings or whatever, just, you're getting bored uh, playing the same same roles over and over yeah. I don't know because it's always new the creation is always new your day moment to moment is always new every single moment is different like you've never encountered the exact same moment ever not that I, I've never have maybe Deja you have. Vu, I guess like like remember it but even then like you're re you're remembering a moment so your like your current moment is melding with you know that moment so that creates true. something new as well like yeah. I think also that concept, you know, everything, nothing is new under the sun. Like, I feel like that's almost a, that's almost a, like a, a denigration of the creative existence because I don't feel like, I feel like that's something that wants to keep you in routine and doing the same thing every day. Like, why do you want, if everything's new under the sun, then what am I even doing here? Like, everything's old, everything, nothing's new under the sun. What am I doing here? Like, to, am I, am I literally living here so I can be a, a, a a repet an exact repetition of what already happened before, like that goes along with accepting the bullshit. Yeah. Why do I want to do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah, that's why we uh, our free will. Um, 
we're given free will, but uh, things may change. I mean, uh, circumstances may change. Um, so, like the multiverse, uh, in, in the, the closest reality to this one, you're sitting here with that guy, and I'm sitting in that car with you know, <laughs> and then like every single possibility is there because it's um, a vibration of sound and and uh, essence. I mean, uh, life force, I guess. That's what that's what Og says too. I mentioned that in one of my recent videos about everything already happened. Uh, that's that concept. Uh, that if you're considering that as some sort of truth, that that is a basically a violation of what I was saying earlier is that everything is new. But everything is new when you when your mind wipe is there. So therefore, for you, everything is new, even if in that yeah. infinite cloud of possibilities, it already happened. It doesn't matter. It's new here now because we don't remember it. So, so it's a stupid argument. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could do the same thing, get your mind wiped, do the same thing, and that could happen for all of eternity, and it still it would be new. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's, yeah. there's, the, infinity doesn't have, it doesn't have like, oh no, this is, this is correct. That no, it's there's, there's no, there's always an exception to every single rule. There's yeah. always a way around it. And and yeah, the 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 roles that we play. Um, that we get, I guess, stuck in, um, uh, have power in the shape, like, uh, I don't know, our, our, our possibilities and, um, the outcomes that we, uh, manifest and attract to us, I guess. Yep. Just it's it's just that. learning that process. If you learn how the process works, then you can have more active participation in your own life. Yeah. Instead of, because the more actively excuse me, the more actively you're participating in your life, the more alive you actually feel, you know, it's possible to be a zombie running around, you know, following a pre-prescribed route and feeling like you're on rails, if that's possible, do you want that? <laughs> I mean, like, maybe, I don't know, do you want to be a train? <laughs> <laughs> you just want to follow everyone else? Yeah. When I was doing, you know, when I, when I was, have, had smoked weed, that's what it did to me, it put me on rails, and I was still having, you know, a moment and, you know, different things were happening but uh instead of like me sensing the cloud of probabilities like i do now mm -hmm. which is what makes me not feel confined mm -hmm. all that was gone and it was literally only the thing that was happening and uh it was a, it was like a trapped feeling and a being on rails feeling and a determinism feeling the whole thing it that. wasn't fun what makes Shoot. us feel free is that when we're doing this, we know we could have done that. You know, it's like, mm. that's what makes the freedom of motion in the physical world is the cloud of probabilities that surrounds you. You sense the other things that could be happening. Yeah, and, and appreciating that too. Yeah. Because, yeah, like the whole thing, um, um, the, the white or the, the light would have no, uh, no purpose if there wasn't any dark. Mm. Like, um, you would have nothing to uh, hold it up against. Uh, so there has to be... Uh, the, the opposite that you have to work within and uh, yeah, just transmuting it so it's um, working with you rather than controlling you um, uh, I guess we should all try to search or try to navigate how that um, how we can do that best yeah the, everything the, in, the, in a duality world everything needs its opposite God needs a devil up needs down exactly. you know, love needs hate and you can't kill one. Yeah. You can't kill one side of a duality and expect that to somehow fix something. If you actually want to get rid of it, you have to let both of them make each other disappear. Mm. It's not you kill one side and somehow the other side, you know, something has happened. No, like, it's literally impossible to do that. It's just, like, an understanding that you need to have. That's why, like, if you're on the, the God-Devil duality and you're like, gotta kill the devil, gotta get rid of him, it's like, no, once you do that, your God's going to disappear. Exactly. That, you want that to happen? <laughs> so, yeah, the, it's, the, it's the perfect, it's the um, un, unfolding of the yin and yang. So yeah. there, it, the white's always fighting the black, but it always has an aspect of the light in it, and so does the black. Like, the, it can never be rid of the opposite of itself within itself. Right. Which is constantly the the same, flowing back and forth. It's the same thing, yeah. Sorry to... 
uh, ramble on. That no, no, no. It was. It's good. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure the people will enjoy it. Whoever actually watches. Nice. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Almost an hour. All right, guys. Yeah. This is. Uh, it's been fun chatting with Joe and. Uh, would like to get more people on here so anyone else who wants to hit me up feel free and i'll get random people on i just do random people thanks for having me <laughs> this is fun yeah Good all right guys us. take care peace <laughs>